As you can see on this calendar that we drew up and make available over at coachingthefight.shop that the fast of the fourth month is fast approaching. In the year 2024, it falls on July the 16th. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about the fast of the fourth month and touching on the other fasts that we find out about in the book of Zechariah and how they're supposed to bring joy and gladness. We'll talk about in this video what we need to do in order to perform those fasts in order to receive this joy and gladness and what that all means. And at the end of the video, we'll talk about the prophecies related to these fasts. Now, if you're looking for the fast of the fifth month, you can see that it falls on about August the 15th. So mark your calendars, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button and be prepared to leave a comment as we go. We're going to jump over in Second Kings, uh, taking a look at the origins of the fast of the fourth month while there is such a thing then of a willing we're going to look over in the book of Zechariah and look at the prophecy of the blessings associated with the fast there are actually four of them and this is valid for really all four fasts so if you're looking at this in one of the other months it should be good we'll briefly look at Isaiah chapter 58 discussing how exactly it is that we are supposed to fast but as you can tell we got a lot to cover so let's go ahead and get started first of all let me start off with a prayer our father in heaven hallowed be thy name father abba we come to you today lord asking that you will open up all communication pathways that we may hear your word and let it impress on our hearts giving us instruction hope and wisdom as we enter these last days in your son's name we pray amen and so be it so when we come over to the scripture and we do a search for the fourth month if putting it in quotation marks we can see all of the times that the fourth month is listed it's only six times and they're really only important to the same date except this Ezekiel 1 and 1 and we're going to get into it when we talk about uh, the Merkaba or the Great Awakening uh, those four beasts but the one here that I wanted to bring to your attention is Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 19 it's actually talking about uh, a particular event in the fourth month it's talking about the fast of the fourth month and let me go ahead and read it. It says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, The fast of the fourth month, and the fast of the fifth month, and the fast of the seventh month, and the fast of the tenth month, shall be to the house of Judah joy and gladness and cheerful feast. Therefore, love the truth and peace. And we're going to understand why it's so important to love the truth and peace when we uh, get down to the latter parts of this video. Um, it's going to kind of come back to haunt those that uh, don't but or maybe ignorance is bliss but we'll talk about that later what I want to point out to you particularly right here is as it's mentioning these four fasts the one you're probably familiar with is atonement day and that is because it's supposed to be the date of the great holocaust that's still yet to come but notice here how it's saying how this will be a day of joy and gladness to the house of Judah and we want to uh, remember that when we get into Daniel's blessing over there I don't want to get ahead of myself so let's just make mental notes that he told Judah and you can find a video we did on who actually is Judah you may be Judah and don't even know it it says joy and gladness and cheerful feast so we have this to yet look for the fulfillment of these fast days bringing the children of Israel joy and if you don't check out that other video Judah is those who keep the feast of Passover um, that's how he gets his garments washed uh, and the blood is through the um, wine that represents the blood of our Messiah but let's go on I want to come back to the first time that you hear about the fourth month in the Bible and that's back in 2nd Kings in chapter 23 it starts talking about um, the fall of Jerusalem back there with Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel and all of them guys that was taken 
into Babylon. Um, the thing about it, all of these fast days, with the exception of one, it's a little bit confusing. There at the end, the um, seventh fast of the seventh month is mentioned down there. Let me just jump down there and look. This down here in about um, verse 25, where it's talking about the seventh month. This one don't really fit the pattern of the other three. You'll notice this is kind of talking about one individual, um, whereas the other one is talking about the temple. But this is the fast of the seventh month, which we know to be atonement day. So I think that's why it's in there, um, just to round everything out. But this is not the event that's being talked about. So just as an aside note. But when we come back to uh, verse one, this is act this one is actually pertinent uh, to this conversation because it's talking about the uh, 10th day of the 10th month. That is when it really all kicked off for Jerusalem. And that's a big deal um, because of the prophecies given to Daniel and how we know that 2022 is actually significant in all it is based on uh, this date here. And we, we've done a lot of classes. I, I will uh, pull out at least one um, document. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and do that. This one page slide actually explains it all. Using the book of Daniel and Ezekiel, we can start back there in 605 BC, which is the date in which we're talking about, the 10th day of the 10th month. Um, that what we saw in the first verse of uh, 2 Kings chapter 25, that was in 605 BC. And then we can go over to Ezekiel chapter 24 and verse 1 to make the connection um, that this is actually the 10th day of the uh, 10th month in 605. And using what Daniel told us down there in Daniel 12, we see that from that date that the daily sacrifice was taken away, there would be this 1,290 years. And so that takes us to the year 686. And to figure this out, guys, um, all we did was start looking for what occurred in Jerusalem in 686. Um, because these are temporary events and what do you know they actually built the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem in 686 exactly 1290 years later so that was the abomination of desolation that Daniel spoke of and the Messiah talked about as well but then when you take 686 continuing on with what Daniel said there in about uh, verse 12 and 13 in the last chapter in Daniel chapter 12 you see that he was told that there will be another 1,335 years until they received a blessing he told them they would get a blessing now that's you know what we were speaking on when we looked at those fast days and how he was told that the, those fasting days would be days of joy and days of uh, cheerfulness and and so that to me seems like the blessing especially when you consider that this 10th day of the 10th month actually fell in January the 13th of the year 2022 that would have been the day that Jacob's trouble ended um, and you would have noticed knowledge increasing ever since that day you know a lot of um, knowledge has is increasing so what we have is all of these events talked about in Daniel chapter 12 occurring in the year 2022 or at least starting in the year 2022 you see there is talking about Michael standing up um, that great prince it is my belief that he has already stood up back there in about January um, based on self-observation and things that are going on with me personally but we're supposed to see many of these other events too like how it says down here in verse 12 blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days but let's jump over to the keys of enoch right quick just to show you uh something interesting it has to say but i want to jump down to uh key 108 where it's also talking about these 1335 and these 1290 days 
Let me let me just read this first. It says the pyramid was built out of the magnetic flux line controls in relationship to a magnetic blueprint conceived in relationship to the belt of Kizil and the sacred numbers 1335 and 1290. The additional functions of magnetic displacement that takes place at the end of magnetic cycles so that's what we're looking at is for this blessing starting in the year 2022 january 2022 but then we see the other fasting day and that is started down here in uh verse two and this is the part where Nebuchadnezzar's troops, his army, came and besieged the city. They um, basically surrounded the city and they starved them out. You see here that the people starved there for over a year or maybe even two years they were being, they was being starved out. And I think this is significant when we think how we have two years to go before the end of the Jubilee year. Um, but we'll get into that in, in another video. What we see here in verse 3 is it, that this started on the ninth day of the fourth month. This is when the famine prevailed. So this is what we're fasting for. This is what the fast is, is all about. The fact that they did this. They starved these people out you know, for all of this time. Even to the point, I think this is the time when the ladies were eating their babies. Just like the scripture said, you know, would occur. Um, that that's how severe this famine was and just to round this out before we go on we come down to verse 8 to see about the fifth month and it was in the fifth month that they actually burned the whole thing down that's what they call the ninth of Av so these are what these fastings are about it's about the uh, temple and this is important for us to make the connection that when we're talking about the temple the third temple we're actually talking about the same thing the great awakening the hour of the conscious so that too will be another blessing day i, I personally um and yeah coach about to make something up but i personally think that this is going to be the bigger uh blessing that we can look forward to will occur on the uh, ninth of Av only because of the severity and the quantity of um, attacks that these people have suffered over the thousands of years um, seems like every bad thing that ever happened to them so really, really bad thing happened on the ninth of Av and so I believe that's when the tables are truly going to turn but anyway the fourth month I believe is not to be looked over but again Zechariah is saying how these are going to be days of joy and gladness and a cheerful feast so in order to receive these blessings I believe it's important that we partake in these in this fast right so let's jump over to Isaiah chapter 58 as we talk about what a fast is um guys when you do a search for a fast in the bible you, you hear them over in the book of esther mention a fast and how they abstain from food but that was really on the in the book of esther my point is is that it didn't set the precedent for how um fasting is supposed to work in fact over here in isaiah 58 we see them being chastised for it well, actually, they started. We started. You see in verse 3, that word wherefore is kind of like saying why. Why have we done this? Where it says, why have we fasted? What, what was the point of fasting? And it's talking to our father saying, you saw it not. It says, uh, why have we afflicted our souls? You know, why have we abstained from food? And you know it's not. You know, you don't, you don't see this fasting that we're doing down here. And, you know, some of us have fasted, you know before and we may have gotten benefits um, in our physical body but as far as spiritual blessings um, we really haven't received those from abstaining from food and what Isaiah is being told here is that that type of fasting was wrong the father said in the day of your fasting ye found pleasure and exacted your wages meaning okay you 
was abstaining from food, but you were still, you know, out doing your business and still out doing, you know, whatever it is that you wanted to do. It was finding your own pleasure. And the only thing you was really doing was, you know, putting down the steak and potatoes that day. Then the father goes on to say, behold, ye fat for strife and debate, you know, so people sitting there arguing about whose fast was a better, cleaner fast. But you see right there in verse four, it says that we're no longer going to fast like that anymore. It says, ye shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. So it's a different kind of fast that he's requiring of us. Verse five starts to question and say, is this the fast that I told y'all to do? And like I said, we're not really told in the Bible about how to fast. If you want to understand the fast that the Messiah went through and Abraham went through and Moses went through and Daniel and all of those guys, when they were fasting, you have to go to the book called the Apocalypse of Abraham and learn that what it, that food fast boils down to abstaining from cooked food and animal products. You fast only eating uncooked food, you eat nothing cooked. I'm actually on that fast right now and it's a um, really educational experience when you start to look at how much of our food is cooked and how much of it's not and what you have to eat when the food is not cooked. And then it's abstaining from animal products and that actually that fast will actually benefit you like I said read the book called um, the apocalypse of Abraham or check out our video we did on the 40 day fast it's actually how the 144,000 or the two witnesses I should say how they will be um, empowered um, is by doing that fast that's that's how it's done like we said the Messiah did it Abraham did it Daniel did it Moses and some other people in the Bible that you know went on a long fast they wasn't abstaining from all food they was eating uh, food that wasn't cooked and no animal products but anyway that's not actually what we're talking about here this is a different kind of fast that we're talking about here in Isaiah chapter 58 because not everybody is expected to go through um, that no cooked food fast like I said it's, it's really not easy uh, to do that um, especially when you consider third Enoch says don't eat any foods um, basically any foods from the store so that adds an extra level of difficulty there and plus it's impossible to get out a 40-day fast over the course of a one-day fasting period so this type of fast that the Messiah is telling them to do here he says is to loose the bands of the wickedness to loose the bands of wickedness and to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free um, and that ye break every yoke so what this is talking about is helping people um, doing stuff for people so the point is is what he's saying is instead of abstaining from food like I said putting down the steak and potatoes what he's saying here is to actually get up and go do something for somebody and this can include praying for people and I actually pray for my family as well but this is actually talking about doing um, charitable deeds what, what what this is going to happen when these when these fasting days are fulfilled is it's going to be um, days of trouble days of turmoil days of um, um, some bad stuff is going to happen like back there during the uh, fasting period during the Krakatoa event we covered that in a video that we called the exact timing of the day of the Lord where we showed how Krakatoa was the um, the um, beginning of the day of the Lord that was um, the sixth seal opened back there with Krakatoa in 1883 that's when the sixth seal opened so what happens on those days you can imagine like on the fast of the seventh month atonement day I believe that's the day we're waiting for so you'll be doing this you'll be lifting the heavy burdens me and you'll be out in the communities trying to help people that you know have suffered on this particular day and I believe this is what makes these days so important is that you know we're expecting bad things to happen to where we're actually going to have to get out here and help each other but he goes on and says is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry 
and that thou bring the poor that are cast out into thy house. So he's talking about feeding people that are hungry and even giving shelter to the homeless here. This is what he means when he talks about a fast. That's why I say you're going to be surprised because you thought it was, you know, you, you wasn't going to eat your steak today. No, it's actually talking about taking your steak and giving it to somebody else. The shepherd of Hermas, he covers fasting too and says to take that money that you would have normally spent on that steak and actually give it to a widow or give it to a Levi or give it to a uh, fatherless child or somebody like that. So the thing about fasting, guys, is his effort. There's effort involved, not just, you know, being in the comfort of your own home and, you know, um, just doing without food, being hungry. No, he has actually expects us to get out there and work. And that's like what he was saying back up there. The fasts are going to be different. We're not going to abstain from food for this thing anymore. Unless, of course, you want to do the, uh, I guess I'm going to call it the 40-day the fast. I almost call it the Abraham fast, but the 40-day fast. So coming back over here, looking at um, the scripture we see on the fourth month, Jeremiah, the same event talked about. It's the time when the city was broken up. That's the time when they got so hungry that all of the men actually tried to escape and ran out and got caught. That's when they ended up going into into Babylon. It mentions that in both uh, chapter 39 and chapter 52. So obviously by now you could tell that I first recorded this video in the year 2022. But here in the year 2024, maybe we should play closer attention to the fast of the fourth month because as we're looking here at second kings chapter 25 we see that the famine ended two years after the besiegement so if the blessings were to start in the fast of the 10th month in the year 2022 then that means that the fast of the fourth month and the fast of the fifth month in the year 2024 could bring joy and gladness so let me close by saying may our father in heaven hallowed be his name bless you and keep you and may our father make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you and may our father our creator lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace